when the ships eventually um, dismantle sometime in the long distant future, people will realize wow. that, um, yeah, this, this teacher um, did that for me and, and that's why the ship exists. What was your your journey, I suppose, to to becoming a, a naval architect? In in the school, I, I was in southeast London, not far from Greenwich. That's where we lived, and I went to a, a local, which we call comprehensive school. And the career service there, when I said, um, you know, when I was sort of fifteen, sixteen, deciding what um, higher education to do, I wanted to be a naval architect. They said, "Oh, don't do that. Engineering is dead. You'll never get a job." And they said, "You know, you're really good at chemistry. You like chemistry." So I was pushed basically mm. by the career service to go and do a chemistry degree and I went to Imperial College in London started the chemistry course and then I was very lucky that um, I kept in touch with some of my old teachers right and the physics master Justin Johnson went out for a few beers with him and he said you know the careers department were really wrong to advise me not to do the naval architecture right he said you know it's something you really want to do you should have really done it and he convinced me in fact to change and in those days university education was funded by your local authority local government right but they would only allow you three years grant okay because i'd already had one year doing chemistry and the naval architecture was another three years they initially declined to um, help me. But Justin lobbied them very, very strongly, and eventually they um, relented, and um, they decided to give me the three years. Goodness, thank so, goodness. <laughs> so I went to yeah, University of Southampton, did my degree, and then became a naval architect. And uh, Justin kept in touch, and um, in fact, I was able to assist him mm. later on by getting um, lecturing assignments on QB2. Oh, wow. So he used to do the computer classes and that. Oh, goodness. Okay, yes. On the computer centre and two deck. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. it. And, of course, he kept very close eye on what I was doing as Queen Mary was announced and yes. building up to it. But, sadly, he died just um, a few months before delivery of the ship from prostate oh, that's, cancer. That's no good. No, shame. So hidden on board is a letter, um, like a eulogy, um, describing that the only reason Queen Mary II exists wow. is because this physics teacher um, helped me um, get my degree and um, basically saying, you know, QM2 in its form um, wouldn't be like it is because I wouldn't have been involved if Justin hadn't have done it. Yeah, And, of course, when the ships eventually um, dismantle sometime in the long distant future, certainly long after I've gone, um, my hope is the letter will be found and the eulogy and that people will realise oh. that, um, yeah, this, this teacher um, did that for me and, and that's why the ship exists, basically. What a fascinating thing that about Queen Mary 2 that I never knew and I'm sure many did people... You? Okay. No, my goodness. And I was thinking to myself... <laughs> I have scoured that ship. Like, if it's somewhere in passenger view, I've seriously... No, 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 it's hidden <laughs> behind the lining. And uh, when I tell this story on board the ship, um, people go and ask the captain and that, and he comes to me and he says, where is this, you know... You're not going to tell them, no. I, I haven't told a soul Good on you. Is. That's amazing. That's so cool. <laughs>